I wish more isekai anime would do what Skimichi Season 2 Episode 5 just did. Let's see what Mr. H. Brandon has to say. Please like his video, sub There's to his channel. There's a lot of great ways that an isekai can go about progressing its main character's journey. And I think after Season 2, Episode 5 of that Tsukimichi greatness, I want to see more teaching arcs. Not in the way mm. that, like, they're immediately starting out. I think he likes terrorizing children just as much as I do. Out as, like, a teacher. Because that can be good. That can be all well and fine. But there's something about a character like Makoto who, you know, like many Isekai characters, short end of the stick, goddess really screwed him over. We yeah. see that. He's not unique in that way. But you can definitely say you know, being able to speak every language other than, well, the one... So, what I didn't get when he used the dark magic is, I'm not sure if that was demi-human language, right? Was that confirmed last episode? Because the kids called it ancient magic. But it's like, hold the fuck up, he just doesn't know the common tongue. But there was also many different languages, like three other ones, even called like a weird tongue. So I'm like, what's going on here? Was that truly ancient tongue? Or was that just demi-human tongue? I'm not sure universally accepted language among the normal humans being considered butt-ass ugly you know that's a pretty shit out of the stick things have started working out for him but uh the road to get there was definitely long and painful the idea of throwing him because of this someone not having the right prescription in not maybe wearing their monocle signs him up not to learn but to be a teacher rembrandt i i, I thought that rembrandt might have intentionally like i thought he did that intentionally because he saw the potential in makoto after the Rembrandt arc, but it's like, no, they straight up just fucked up. The butler and Rembrandt just mix up the paper. It's like, how do you even have teacher form there? Why would you even have that? The fact that we can have such a fun situation where... Also, aren't these kids like the same age as us? This kid right here with the white hair, the, the, the short bob hair guy, this dude is literally married. So we're like teaching our own age group, right? When you look at season one, and even if I'm fuzzy on season one, the general journey and what he went through, the big moments, are still pretty on my mind for the most part. To see him start with a class of 10, to see like, okay, do they want to teach under this guy who they're saying, if he's ugly, we don't we don't want to be around him. Creepy, or he's not, seems like he knows what he's doing, we're out of here. And yeah. out of 10, five decided to stick with him, which is actually pretty impressive. If it you is. told a Tsukimichi fan, first three to six episodes of season one, that by season two, episode five, he would be uh, accepted by at least five normal looking humans in this world. Accepted. Is he accepted by them? Yeah, I, I think they look down on us right away, right? They're like, oh my god, who the fuck is this ugly motherfucker? If he's not strong, I don't care. But then that little duel with Shiki was pretty much just a... They were just mind-blown with that, right? They were actually terrified. And then we did actual training, and I think they've completely... Like, uh, they completely respect us, or at least are terrified of us. I'm not really sure. Maybe a combination of the two. And the girl is just simping over Shiki. That's pretty much it. The girl's reason for joining was Shiki rising her up. World. You know, not many people are going to believe you, but the pacing to get to this point actually feels really good. And I kind of wish more Isekai would throw their main character into the deep end like this for a second time. Not in the way that he immediately just plummets and he feels like he's drowning, but rather they put him into a situation he doesn't really fit in with, but actually... Actually, he's doing a really good job. Also, I'm just starting to realize another parallel from uh, Reincarnated as a Slime and Skimi Chiminle Fantasy is the teaching. You know, Rimuru went to, uh, what's that city? Ingrassi or some shit to um, get Shizu's students, right? We got like, how? Is there five kids there too? Is there five kids or is there four kids? Anyways, you know, more parallels between these two, but yes, I understand Skimi Chiminle Fantasy is the original. He has a lot to learn about being a teacher. Of course, there's no. There's five kids? <laughs> There's so many similar. Is there a Shiki equivalent in Slime? Is there like a lich? Like a handsome lich? I, I don't think so. We have sands or butts about that. But I actually think the idea of what he said about how, okay, listen, you guys can use this element and a little bit of this. That's all well and good. Mm. What happens when your main element goes away? You're going to die on the battlefield. He and this is one of the coolest things too. Because like in this show, it's like everyone's trying to like one trick pony into one single element. It's basically like a college major and a minor. You might be really good at water and you might like minor in math and fucking fire or something, right? But like he wants every one of those kids to be competent in three separate elements minimum, right? So I wonder by the end of this teaching how different these kids will be compared to like the rest of the students at school, right? Because I don't think any of these kids... The rest of the uh, students at school will be even able to touch Makoto's students soon. 
the way that he's training them. And like even right now, this is the first time we saw an application of multi-element at the same time. Fire and water arrow. Albeit, it, it is just like normal basic magic still, right? Where Bro is just still using like the most basic rudimentary magic skills. At the end of the day, didn't we come to the school to learn like advanced magic? So I wonder if he's going to be taught at the same time. He knows about the hell and pain that this world has. So the idea that he's trying, he's saying like, you should get good with three. Even if the world's saying that's not how it is. Like everyone universally just uses one at max. Imagine if they actually learn three and how other people are gonna like perceive them like oh my god these are godlike beings he's not universally the goddess threw him screwed him around and he's gonna teach as many as he can at least with this position about how to do things the correct way and i really like them it's such a different style of tsukimichi while still feeling like Tsukimichi through and through. Now, I, of course, have a full live reaction today. Check us Patreon out, guys. Over on my Patreon, so if you want to see my full link of thoughts as we watch, it's over there if you're interested. Now, I think some people may be a little upset that Tomoe as well as Mio aren't really as relevant this season. Yeah, I'm starting to realize that the extent of Tomoe and Mio that we're going to see is basically Mio's cooking journey and Tomoe just kind of... Well, we got to... It was a, We had an interesting scene with Tomoe last time. And... The interesting scene wasn't really about Tomoe, it was the war veteran, right? The person that witnessed the battlefield, the war that Makoto pretty much just turned into a, this lake now. But he's like, oh my god, that while the goddess loves the humans, I feel like there's another guy that like punishes us for having war with the demons. And that is the man clad in black and uh, sorry, blue and red with the rings, right? Makoto. So I thought that was a really interesting thing about how other people are now perceiving Makoto as some kind of deity, some kind of being that will punish you if you start fucking around by having war against the demons. Which is like, I don't know, could that kind of help for world peace between them? I'm not really sure. But yeah, Tomoe has been just relegated to this like adventuring just walking around role and then Mio is just fucking master chef and we get to see Komoe in the random intermission scene which is kind of cute for me it doesn't bother I haven't seen a lot of hate but I have seen some people say they miss now mm. we still do get to see them what they're up to I think you know honestly Mio being trying to learn how to cook if she managed to learn how to cook properly she'll do what Xi'an from slime couldn't do which is not poison someone no matter how hard they try. I, th I thought she only gets like a, a gift in season two, right? Doesn't she get a gift after Bimuru becomes... Maybe I shouldn't say for spoilers, but I, I, I thought that her cooking is actually amazing. But like, it looks bad still. It's like a poison sludge, but if you taste it, it actually tastes good. Hey, power to her. I mean, she talks about how like she usually just like loses those like little eye things in the sweet potatoes, whatever they were. I'm pretty sure she was cutting them into the skin and they were breaking apart, causing for horrible flavor. That's just Probably. my theory. And honestly, I like the fact that as much as I like those two and as much as they were kind of the all stars in season one, the thing for me is I actually much prefer having them separated from her boy because it lets for our boy Makoto to really start something new and give Shiki a character who definitely deserves the spotlight the spotlight because if we're going to introduce at least five characters right now for a class that he's teaching we have the bullies from the previous episode right who, honestly I wasn't alone most people said the obvious outcome was that they were going to be in his class me too I thought that those do because as soon as they said that you can float I was like ah shit is it the blonde kid and his friends Please no, but it's not that. They're doing something interesting with the blonde kid. So he's like, he, got, he basically got some steroids. There's like a lady uh, that basically offered him some steroids and now he's just really kind of stronger. But maybe this will tie into some kind of overall school competition where that guy will fight some of our students, but our students are not on steroids, but they are more cracked than he could ever be because of the new training lessons. I hope that could be a cool moment where we basically just humble him once more and just kind of shit on him. But where are they going with that plot line? And who is that girl? Because that girl got the steroids, not, it was from Bright, right? That teacher that gave us the 10 students. I can't believe the guy that gave us the 10 students well, I can believe it, honestly. He, he seemed way too nice in the beginning, so he was already sus, but wonder where we're going with that. So far, anyway, they avoided the obvious predictable thing of the people who come to his class are the ones he kicked their ass of. Instead, right now, we're actually dealing with five very interesting characters with their own characteristics, quirks, and unique character designs. Could this man eventually join into the class? Of course, but the fact that the intro is different than where many of us expected, you know, you can give it a little a little another check mark for Tsukimichi doing things different in a very fun way. The thing about this is that I think uh, academy setting can be boring. I like 
I love academy setting. I need more academy setting. Academy settings are the best settings in my opinion because it puts you against different peers, different people from all different family groups, elites, nobles, from commoners, geniuses, peasants, normies, I don't know. And it also leads to amazing tournament arcs, battle royales, hype moments. Academy is the perfect place to be pitted against other students, other rivals, and have really hype scenes. Unless it's Mushoku Tensei. Because then we're just going to spend the entire arc fixing his boner, which is still great. Still great writing. Liked it in Mushoku Tensei. Some people did. Some people said, let's yeah. just keep moving yeah. on. Everyone oh, who knows? Maybe maybe Core 2 coming up in April. We're still at the Academy setting, right? Maybe things change. Who knows? It's different. I like the Academy stuff if it's handled in an intelligent way. And this, yeah. to me, is doing exactly that. I think the idea of how he got them to accept him, even though he didn't expect even five. How did he make them accept him? By absolutely terrorizing these poor kids. But they deserved it. They go and learn today. I, he didn't probably expect more than two, to be honest, to stick by. Because he listened in him. They were talking mad shit. Everything mm. that they hate was him as a person. Yeah, they were like, ew, ugly. Ew, can he even fight? Ew. The idea that pretty much you have this mock battle and you kind of have this hard-ass teaching persona, it makes a lot of sense. He made quite the entrance because he's using his experience from the first season about how, like, when it was revealed to his kind of, like, monster village about what he can do and his lack of limitations, it gained him a lot of respect and just impressions right away. So by using that to show that, like, listen, you may look at me as some butt-ass ugly monster, I can't speak, I'm just horrible, but I'm mm. better than anyone you've ever seen. And he <laughs> Pretty much. He's like, sure, talk all that shit, but I'm strong and you'll see it. And I think he saw, like, he remembered Tomoe's, like, leadership speech back during the Demiplane tournament arc start, right? So, I think he was trying to do a little bit of that, but unfortunately, he doesn't have that speech quality that Tomoe has because he can't fucking talk. It's just kind of hard to translate words into... It, 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 there's one... When, when you can actually talk and have, have public speaking skills like Tomoe, then you can, like, command an audience. But, you know, Makoto fucking... Bing... Bing, it's fucking we can't communicate how do you command an audience with little texts like that right the idea that mock battle between shiki and makoto was incredible because yeah. what you end up getting was something that was very flashy very visually stimulating but most importantly it shows them why you want to stick by now of course not everyone's gonna like that three of the girls two of the guys pretty much noped out weak pussies called they deserve to get called eliminated fuck them we don't need them there and honestly, it's understandable. It kind of looked like Demon Lords going at it. One of this is true. I mean, compared, like, like memes aside, memes aside, like if you're just a regular student and you see this godlike being versus another godlike being fighting like that, it, it, you would probably be really scared too. Yeah, it, it takes a kind of special person to really be motivated by that. Jin was motivated by that, right? The Swordmaster guy, the blue hair guy, who seems to be the leader of the group, or at least in the future. He was pretty interesting. Two of them actually got hurt, and surprisingly, the one who got hurt was the one who stuck by out of the girls' group, which was a nice uh, change of pace of what you would expect. But the idea that, you know, just all that shit-talking, realizing that this is who they were shit-talking, we need to learn from him, even mm -hmm. if he's different, even if he's not your normal Even if he's ugly. Teacher, the fact that, you know, he went out of his way to only start with 10. He wants to start with a small group and build... Right, I think the clout of having more students... Obviously, there's more money that comes with it, but also people will respect you more because you have more students. So students were like, oh, only 10 student teacher. Ew. You know, it's like that. But Makoto doesn't need the money. Bro doesn't need to care about that. Show. So instead, he's going to train like 10, sorry, five elite, elite soldiers along this way. Build his way up for each student, 10 silver. It's just a formula that works, in my opinion. You have some of like the flirtatious and funny moments, like the girl pretty much like getting rizzed well, up by yeah. because Shiki was such a gentleman, healed her. And then ultimately she vomited in front of him like, listen, girl. Oh, yeah. She was actually embarrassed about the rainbow puke. You can't vomit in front of your crush and your crush isn't, you know, there to take care of you. Then he's never going to be with you anyway. True. True. That person would hold your hair up if he actually cared about you. So if anything, you're just getting shit out of the way. Not that I think she has a shot, but you know what? I'm Jesus, Brandon. I mean... Yeah, like, come on, like, is, is Shiki gonna date that girl? Like, it's not gonna happen. Shiki's some fucking legendary old lich, right? It doesn't work like that. For a deep downside, do your best, girl. Goddamn. 
And the guys were actually pretty fun because what was nice is that none of them really feel egotistical in this group, right? Mm -hmm. Like in the way that like... The only one that felt egotistical was Jin in the beginning when he said like, is this person worthy of me? Because I'm trying to be like the next sword master. He's like, I, I only do swords. It's like, what, do you, what can I get out of you? And those are honestly like fair claims. They're actually fair concerns. But despite that, they're all pretty nice. Like they're all very humble. They're all very willing to learn. I, I think that we have a good group of five compared to those fucking blonde kids. They sucked. Oh, I'm better than so-and-so. You can look at the very end of their mock battle against Makita, right? So pretty much everyone's down for the count. There's two left. The one dude, instead of just, you know, trying to heal himself or this or that, instead, he used the last of his strength to heal the best fighter of their group. Okay, I thought that scene was not heroic, but funny. Because bro looked like he didn't want to even be there in the first place, but he just forcing himself. So at the end, he was like, fuck it. I'm out. I don't want to fight anymore. Jin, you go do your thing heal i'm out peace i thought that's what he did now maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm trying to look too deep into things maybe i'm trying to make content out of it so i'm memeing around but i swear this dude the way that he was smiling and smirking as he went out it wasn't some kind of heroic sacrifice but more like i'm out bro enjoy yourself sure doesn't do anything right makito just walks him away like he's a fly or a mosquito but that's the type of teamwork you want to see in a group dynamic and anyone who's been in school settings with large class sizes medium class sizes and small class sizes mm -hmm. if you've had experience with all types everyone is going to universally agree the small classes are the best because you have yes and this is something i noticed when i went from high school to college the difference is so crazy because back in high school our classes were around like i don't know 20 to 30 people and you could get direct help from the teacher. There's more of a one-on-one -on -one connection. Everyone feels a little bit more connected. And it feels like the learning pro process is a lot more facilitated. You go to college and I realize it's a fucking 500-person lecture. No one knows who the fuck each other is. You can barely get the fucking professor's help. You're on your own. So absolutely agree. Small class sizes are the most beneficial in terms of actual education and learning. Have more one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. There's more... You feel like there's actually a connection. It's not just, yeah. oh, here's student of one of 30 exactly just, like we barely get to know it's funny he says one of 30 because that's the example i use for the small class and while the big one is you know one out of 500 but you get the point and i think because of the small class size they're really going to have a chance to pop off and learn a lot from him because for this being his first real teaching job sure he's taught a lot in his village and stuff but like a proper education role it's going to allow him to really learn about a situation that he thought he had no skills for but he has a lot to teach this world and i think these five they seem eager to learn which is more you can say for probably most of the people in that yeah. school now of course we have the whole antagonist plot line i mean at the end of the episode one of the teachers is fucking around trying to find steroids and obviously we have the student stuff we have some teacher stuff and honestly just a lot of people trying to poke the bear unfortunately for them they don't know the bear that being makito can kill a fool if he really needs to and uh he does have a savage side when push comes to shove that savage side bro i'm telling you that savage side is gonna start to show more and more they're starting to peak a little bit more of this psychotic sociopath that is makoto that we saw a little bit of in season one and little faint moments in season two i swear to god you guys need to pay attention this is not a sweet boy. Something is fucked in his head. And so, wait, I hope something snaps again this season. So uh, don't don't mess with his students. That's all I'm saying. Because I know there's going to be a few dumbasses who will. And they're mm. going to lose a limb or two if they attempt to. So let me Yo, let's disarm them humans just like that blonde girl. Oh, you thought this week's episode of Suki. Nice review by Brandon as usual. Please, guys, give him a like. Sub to the channel if you enjoyed it. This episode was a delight. I love Academy Settings. We're back with the main plot. You know, I know a lot of people don't enjoy the, you know, the disciples of the goddess arc for a little bit. I thought those two episodes were perfectly fine. I just fleshed out the story more. But obviously, people want the main character, Makoto, right? So we're back. And I'm sure the next couple episodes, maybe we'll have a little bit of conflict with the blonde kid. Maybe our students will fight them, right? I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty fun, though.